KKHT wants you to meet three of the classiest guys in real estate. I am Chris Kelso, the maestro of mortgage. I am Rob Cook, the godfather of real estate. And I am Joe Orsak, the king of credit swing. And together, we're the, the Real, real estate, estate Rat Pack. Pack. Much like us, real estate right now is smoking hot. So whether it's buying, selling, or owning, you need to check out the Real Estate Rat Pack. They're here to take your calls and answer your questions live. Call now, one 800 808 548 and now the real estate rat pack yeah oh! <laughs> every week it's the same now, thing see, now I'm, every I'm, week. I'm recruiting chris because he's he's been sneaking in on that action too now he rob just cringes every, i know rob every cringes every time, every every time. we have to get him into it he's got to start doing the same <laughs> you thing know, we have to have some modicum of decorum and <laughs> Why? I'm not sure, but anyway. Who said um, anything about decorum? What, yes. What is Rob? Decorum anyway? yeah. That was Rob's word. Yes. Yes. He rented it from the library. Yes, I did. I have to have it back by Tuesday. Exactly. <laughs> so we got a pretty good show today, but you know what? I want to yes. talk about a garage sale that we're having this week. The uh, Rat Pack is a big part of that. We had a dear friend of ours who had $25,000 stolen from their house out in Katy. And uh, might this have seen was, it on the news. It might have seen it on the news. It was interviewed, and actually, they apprehended seven of the eight that were the perpetrators. So, no really? Yes, I did not even know yes, that. I found that out last night. But what it did is that was their money to operate their business, their home, everything. That was all their money. So, what we're trying to do is make them whole again. And we set up a garage sale out at my office, the Berkshire Hathaway office, Anderson Properties, out at 741 East 11th Street. Right, right in the Heights. Right in the Heights. It's at Studewood and 11th. Easy to find, right across from Ruggles Green. Please invoice Ruggles Green, would you? Yes. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's going to start at, uh, according to Ben Wood, now tell me what's his name again, the one that did the Grand Slam Garage Sales. Grand ben, Slam Garage ben Sales. Weisenstein. We Weisenstein, yes. We had him on the show, a uh, guy that's been featured on national news, local news, and most importantly, the Real Estate Rat Pack show. That's when he really broke That's up. when he really broke loose. But he's going to help us with this. And he's going to actually give us a reduced amount of what he's going to do to charge us. I've got the pods. People have donated a pod. Hop on so. Facebook.com forward slash real estate rat pack. So what I'm asking is, if, if anyone, that. you know, spring cleaning is right around the corner. I mean, we're most of the way through January now. You know, it's, so let's get an early start. All that stuff you've been promising that you're going to get rid of, get it together. We actually have a team of people standing by with trucks. They'll come pick up your big items. And in fact, if you've got a lot of items, we'll come by and pick it up. Even if it's a lot of small items, we'll come get it. So. And let me tell you, it's for a great cause. It's, you know, for a very a sad situation of somebody getting their house robbed. It's never something someone wants to go through right there. These are the and, kind of folks yes. that, you know, we've, we've all known them for a good while now. They're hardworking. They're everything that I love about America. They're a young couple that are trying to build a business, create jobs. And improve our economy, and they've had something happen to them that is the, I, that I absolutely loathe. It is the lowest of low. A thief is the lowest of low to me to steal what other people. Well, have I've got one lower for. than that, but we won't yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's, there are some more, but I won't mention those yes. on air. Uh, but anyway, you just it, they're wonderful, wonderful people. We've known them for a long time. This is not someone that we're detached from. It's someone that we know personally, yeah. and, and we, we know continue their character. To biz with with them, and again, I, we love the entrepreneurship. Yes. Uh, so please mode. go to facebook.com forward slash real estate rat pack. We have all kind of details up there. They also have a GoFundMe site that you can uh, donate to. We will make sure that we have a link up there for that as well. Do we have a link up or do we? I'm not sure if we have it up okay. on the rat pack, but we will okay. after today. So anyway, I want to start with that. Yes. So so that's kind of a lead into our first guest. And Greg, now tell me, it's Swedberg. Is that right? If I get it correct this time. Yeah, it's Greg, okay. Greg well, what Swedberg. What in the world are we talking about today? Well, what, do we need to talk about anything? We just kind of, <laughs> you know, we actually do better on the breaks when we're just kind of chit chatting. <laughs> Why don't we just do a chit chat? Actually, you, you uh, can talk about current events if that's current uh, events. Uh, yeah. uh, well, okay. We don't don't we get want, me started. Don't get started on that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Greg is the I'm not, I'm uh, not. owner of. To scale architecture, is that correct? Yeah. Make sure I get all this right. And you do a lot of work in the Heights. And where else are you working right now? Man, we are building, designing houses all over town where people are spending money in all of the hot markets. Majority of our business is inside the loop, but we have several projects in Memorial, a couple projects out in Sugarland, Westview, Bel Air, Garden Oaks, um, all the hot neighborhoods where people want something unique and creative. That's where our clients are coming from. Let's do we, a little mini biography here. Let's kind of go dial back the Wayback Machine and go back. What got you interested in architecture and where did it start? 
Wow. The short version is uh, when I was a little kid, I believe I was in third grade, I, I figured out that architecture was the thing for me. And all of my old, old friends from the way, way, way back machine um, actually kind of despised me because I decided I wanted to be an architect and never wavered. The, wow. the fireman and astronaut thing never, never happened. So, so I'm living the dream. Excellent. Excellent. For our, our listeners' benefit, the subject today that we want to talk about, and they, they might have already started cluing in with an architect on the show here, but we're talking about what's involved when you want to build your own home. And we've got some serious expertise here today on that front, decorators, architects, custom home builders. So uh, any of you guys out there that I have think questions decorators in that would line? probably be the you know, fence. It's, it's designer. Designer. Oh, so my gosh. Slap me. Yes. That's why she was giving me the evil eye over yeah. here. Never, yeah. It's and, not a decorator, to be clear, because I've, I've already been through this. She's got uh, red hair, and I've heard those people can be fiery, so I better watch yes. out. And you're sitting right next I to her. I know. Her. I'm with an right. arm's length. Be warned. Your shoulder kind of flinched there for a second. Anyhow. But, uh, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Well, that's good. So, so and, uh, as, as we're all, what? what huh? <laughs> <There you> go. <laughs> Tangent. <laughs> we already, we, you know, shiny metal uh, object. Yes, yeah. <laughs> squirrel. <laughs> squirrel. Um, 800-808-5548 If you want to talk about designing your own home, we've got all kind of expertise to cover that today. So there's the subject. So often the first thing that people do is say, "Well, I want to design a home." They're going to come to you. How do you start that process with them? Well, a lot of times we've got to make sure that their expectations are realistic. So we're talking about. Uh, we're talking about budget. We're talking about what quality of home they're looking. You know, is this a is this a starter home, a move up home, a vacation home? A lot of our clients now are looking at what we're calling forever homes, which is a home that they plan on gracefully going into their senior years in. So that type of home is a lot different than the home that somebody's looking to you know start a family or raise a family. So there's there's some very key sort of decisions that families need to make on the early end when they're interviewing with us. Well, navigate us through the process. I mean, you can do it kind of your Reader's Digest version, but navigate through the process where you start, probably do some preliminary things and come back to them and say, this is what it looks like. and then Reader's kind of Digest that. version. So at the end, just give us a, your favorite recipe. What's, <laughs> what's Reader's Digest? <laughs> what? Oh, wow. I'm kidding. Wow. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> you have to forgive Rob. He's seasoned. I'm seasoned. So people need to have a piece of property. You know, some people will say, well, just design me a house and then I'll find a piece of property to put it on. And it really doesn't work that way. Houston is such a sort of bifurcated neighborhood collection where you've got word back on Tuesday (laughs) (laughs) where you've got, you know, different deed restrictions, different sort of limitations with pieces of property. So we like clients to have their own track of land that they're going to. Now, that could be a teardown. We'll help people work with uh, tearing down a piece of property that maybe is dilapidated. But then we come up with a design concept, which is sort of their wish list and their goals and how that relates to their budget. And then we grow it from cute and fun sketches into something that's really, uh, that is ready to be going to the city for permitting and for the builder to, uh, to appropriately price. That process can take as little as two months. It can take as long as, as a year in some instances, but for the most part, our clients are, are spending about four months in this preliminary design, going from not having a clue to having something that's ready to get built. So do you have some like off-the-shelf type of plans that people will elect to use, or are they all custom? Our business model doesn't work in that way. We're all custom, so we feel that every design should be appropriate for that piece of property, appropriate for that user. And we address whether it's a five-year goal, a 10-year goal. How does this home shape somebody's life? And it's Something as simple as how many bedrooms, but it can also be, you know, how are you keeping an eye on the kids when you're in the kitchen? Or if the husband is working late at night, is the noise that he's making disrupting the kids who are trying to sleep? Or how do we get to the second floor if I have a bad hip that gets blown out in a couple of years? So that, there's a lot of custom issues that come into play, and we make sure our houses address every one of them. So you're basically going to ask them about their lifestyles. A lot, because we talked about this a lot. We've had some of the production builders on the show, and, and, you know, we've all kind of decided that we're not selling homes anymore. We're selling lifestyles. And so you address their, what their lifestyle is. I'm, I'm up late at night. We need to do this. We need to Yeah. Think. A lot of the discussions in the early on are, is not necessarily what their lifestyle is now, but it's really what do you want the lifestyle to be? Where do you see yourself in the next year? Because some people will say, oh, well, the... Well, that's good because it's better than what I've got now, but maybe just being a little bit better than what you have now isn't enough. Maybe we really need to be addressing, like you said, those lifestyle goals 
And I think the built environment, at least with with good architecture, do, does a good job of that. Now, I've always been able to read architectural plans, and I can actually see the things 3D. But I know a lot of people are more linear type thinkers, and they see what they see. How do you kind of paint that picture of what this is going to look like when it's completed? Wow, that's a really good question. We often... <laughs> that's why Rob makes the big bucks. <laughs> uh, I was going to ask you what your favorite color was. I'm an architect, so of course. (laughs) I'm an architect, of course it's black, right? (laughs) Uh, I actually don't think I'm wearing any black. (laughs) I'm out of uniform. Uh Uh, I've always sort of hung my hat on my ability to sketch. And I think um, a lot of my non-visual clients respond well to perspective sketches, uh, to, to the little doodles that express design in a tangible way, way earlier than when we actually have something that's concrete. And at what point can you actually kind of put a, a number to uh, what they're building? I, they pro- that's probably one of the first questions they're going to, how much is it going to cost me? Yeah, that's that's true. Well, because of our experience, we're able to have the discussions about what kind of amenities you want. You know, are you a, are you a Vic and Anthony's type of, type of taste or, you know, are you, are you a Wendy's McDonald's type budget, of taste? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, or whatever your flavor is. What is a do you have like a, a typical price point that it kind of you see where it's below this point it's it's not it doesn't make a, well I shouldn't say it doesn't make sense to have an architect but do you see a typical price point that people come in at where they start employing your services If that's a great question if there are if there are clients yeah well, you wrote that one down you for get me a there, gold so. you get a gold star <laughs> If there are clients that are looking to build a house the construction budget is about $300,000 or up Okay. Um, there's usually enough money in the kitty to hire an architect. It, well, I promise you, my to, wife is taking notes. I'll, I'll back up to to, <laughs> to, to, to hire, not necessarily to hire an architect, but to hire us. Let's say. Well, well you don't understand. We have a running. We have a running joke about uh, Joe and Kim, and Kim is always at home listening, and we always work on Joe uh, on the air to get him to buy her a new house. It, so we're, every, we always I, try to work I, it in I initiated, I initiated that one because they work it in every every Saturday no matter what. So. Well, we also do a lot of uh, large-scale remodels. I wouldn't necessarily say that $300,000 benchmark applies um, for remodels. We do things in the in the one and two hundred thousand dollar work. So it's it's more than just fl- sw- switching some cabinets or adding some paint. But we're talking to clients in uh, Garden Oaks and Oak Forest. You're seeing a lot of a lot of strong remodel work in those neighborhoods um, where we're adding floors or adding rooms or reconfiguring spaces. And so we're seeing a lot of budget savvy clients uh, making some good design decisions, fixing up, you know, some 40s and 50s houses around the city, which I, which I appreciate. Very cool. This is what you call dead air. <laughs> but, you know, one thing I'm going to tell you, you know, I'm looking on your website. Obviously, you've got two scale ARCH, Arc for Architects, I would imagine. Um, great website. A lot of neat designs you've done around the area. And more importantly is I was reading that you are a Houston native. You graduated from the University of Houston. Let us know. I mean, most people don't realize University, University of Houston has one of the best architecture schools in the nation. Is that correct? I like to think so. I'm not sure the critics think so, but it's a it's a great school. There are very there's only a small handful of architecture schools um, in this in the state of Texas. So we the music's uh, playing real quick. I want to make sure you have a chance to give out your number. How to get people get hold of you? Uh, the best way would be go to the website as he mentioned, twoscalearch.com. That's the number two scalearch.com, um, or reach us at seven one three six two three one two two two. We'll be glad to talk to anybody if they're thinking about maybe an architect is is an appropriate route for them to go with their next project. We'd love to at least talk to them and see if it, see if it's a good fit. Outstanding. We'll stick around because we're going to have an open session at the last break, so we want to make sure we have the time to uh, ask you some more questions. We'll be right. Back. Awesome. Thank you. Like an ocean wave that's bumped on the shore. Welcome back to the Real Estate Rat Pack Radio Show with Chris, Joe, and Rob. The crew is taking your calls, so dial in at 1-800-808-5548. And welcome back to the Real Estate Rat Pack Show, man. It is such we're a good time to be here that, you know, the air. whole conversation is going on, and we are live on air. You know that, we're right? Edu- we're discussing <laughs> business cards yeah, over we're, here. We're trying to educate Joe over the, here. About the marketing guy and the... Uh, 
the very schooled with multiple, you know, um, what's it called? Accreditations behind her name here. Designations, Al- yeah. Right. Alphabetical letters uh, in strange orders uh, <laughs> behind her name. <laughs> this this design uh, expert over here and I were discussing the fineries of business cards. So we well, you know, and the great very thing important is, stuff. this is a show very important for you, Joe, because, you know, it's all about designing a new home. It's about building a new home. <laughs> Extremely important show. So, you know, yes. not only do you get to, to listen to it, but you get to experience it today. Uh, I'm, I would not be surprised if my wife called in on this show. <laughs> we are waiting she for She texts us call. during the show with, with questions already. So, <laughs> that is She's great. a we motivated know, buyer. Our next guest up is, a, is <laughs> Me, right so along what we talked about in reference to designing a home. Our next guest, I don't want to mispronounce your last name, by the way, but you have. We gave you a hint. Yes, exactly. Janine Nuzzy. Janine Nuzzy. That's right. <laughs> that with Gabriel fuzzy. Home Builders. How are you doing today? Very good. Rhymes Thank you. Fuzzy. Thank you very much for being on board. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm having fun. You know, let us know a little bit about Gabriel Home Builders, by the way. You know, one of the things that we like to do is introduce, especially we talk, we talk about this, some of our home builders, some of our local, regional, custom home builders that we see out there that we don't hear about a lot. So great opportunity to do so. Thank you. I started the company in 1998. I worked... It? I'm sorry, cheesy question. What was the inspiration for the name uh, Gabriel Home Designs? That is my grandfather's name. He was not a builder, but I picked up his name. Um, just popped into my head when I was trying to. Long story, actually. but uh, It's a special name to me. I love that name. I do, too. Thank you. It's Gabriel, um, anytime God had a message to deliver, he sent Gabriel. He and, did. Uh, and uh, and when I was thinking about it, my grandfather, it was as if he was in the back seat of my car saying, Gabriel's got to be the name, so that's what I went with. I love communication and and uh, and delivering, you know, messages. Thus, being on a radio show, <laughs> and so Gabriel's kind of a special character to me in in scripture. But anyway, nothing to do so, with anything. I was just curious about where you got the name from. <laughs> so. Back to the late nineties. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, digress. back to our show. <laughs> <laughs> the late nineties, ninety eight. I started. Um, no, I actually used to work for builders out in Sugarland. I was a new home salesperson, and while I worked mm-hmm. for them, I bought my first home. We won't say how long ago that was. And, Five years ago. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and decided to renovate it and ask them, can I use some of the subcontractors that you guys use? And they let me do that, and I renovated my first home in the Heights and just started from there. Loved it, loved the creativity of it and the whole idea of building and and so in 98 I formed the company after I sold new homes for 10 years and broke away from that and just started from there and here we are so when did you get your degree in counseling (laughs) (laughs) first first selling new homes you'd get really good at it yeah we we, we, you, you know some of our most interesting conversations are prior to the show and during the breaks and we talked about how stressful it can be for a couple to go through the home building process. It is, it's, it can be very stressful. And so we were talking about what that looks like. And so you might want to kind of address some of that. What we try to do to help alleviate a little bit of that is try to set the client's expectations along the way. Because there's so many unknowns for the clients. I mean, budget, what's it going to look like? I didn't expect it to be like that. This is smaller than I thought. I mean, you know, the list goes on. So what we really try to do when we get started with the client is set the expectations. And we really do like to pair up with the architect early on in the process so that we have the same understanding as the architect does of what the client's vision is. And when we know that going in, then we it's it's easier for us to help them budget along the way and to continue to set their expectations in terms of just continuing to create their vision and making sure it happens what is since so, so, so we're all kind of on this theme you know all, even off air what what is the biggest point of contention is there is there an area that is that tends to be the most stressful or something you know if if somebody's out there a couples out there saying you know i i think we really want to design a home if there was an area that was more uh, contentious than any other, would there would there be one um, when it comes to I, the whole process of building? I think probably two things. One is staying in budget, mm. and the other is 
that they understand that it is what they wanted, that it looks like because they don't have the vision. People think linear, like like you mentioned. And so it's, you know, pairing up with the architect and helping them understand what it's going to look like and that it is in your budget. Because a lot of times what can happen is if 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 the builder is brought in too late in the process and we're asked at the very end of the process to price, you know, price this home for us and they had these expectations of it's going to cost 500 and when we get done pricing it out it's 600 or 700 then that at that point there uh, how what what can we do to get back down to where we need where, to where can we find $100,000 <laughs> yeah, of savings we, make it smaller <laughs> that's right <laughs> <laughs> Downscale. We don't really need cabinets. <laughs> Just lay the granite oh, on the give floor. Give us a honey. shell space and an air conditioner. That's all we need. Uh, <laughs> but that's typical. I think it does shock people a lot of times because material costs have gone up pretty exponentially in the last year and a half or so because of the demand for new construction materials. That's right. They have. And labor costs are going up because there is a labor shortage of good people. So all those things are affecting price. So what do you tell somebody who said, you know, I'm thinking about building a new for myself, get exactly what I want, or I might be looking at the resale market. What's that conversation look like? I think they should go explore all options. I think it's really important because when they build a home, it's a big commitment. It's, you know, three months to a year with an architect, another year with us. And so they really, it's really important that they're sure that this is what they want to do. And so, this, this may be a question for the architect, I don't know, but in the process of building, when you're going back and forth, or, or you know, like the situation you described, I'm thinking, okay, number one, subject of contention, budget, they meet with the architect, they come up with their dream home, they argue back and forth about all the fineries, and now they've got it, they come to you, and they're like, holy cow, it's 100 grand over, over budget, right? Right. Do you, is, is it common then that you're working with the architect or back and forth there to, you know, where can we in essence, find a hundred grand to uh, make this house happen. Is that a common scenario that you find? It, it probably fifty fifty. Wow. That's why. That's why I. That's why I like to get involved in the beginning so that we can work with the architect and the client. We can make some some material suggestions so that we're still maintaining their vision and, you know, just work together as a team to get them where they want to be and find that hundred thousand. So. Yeah. Would it make sense then, you know, I'm trying to think of the flow from, you know, the person out there is listening is genuinely considering, hey, I, I want to build a custom home. It, it makes sense then to, to come to you as the, the uh, custom builder uh, as the first step to then involve the architect from there so that you guys can kind of work in tandem together uh, to keep that budget in, in line with what the couple would uh, have in mind, or I shouldn't couple, anybody. It, it can happen both ways, and oftentimes architects will come to us once they've initially met the client, and they'll bring us into the team and say, we'd like you to you know, work with this client and maybe do some preliminary budgeting for them before we get to final design to make sure that we're in this, the price point that they want to be. So Oftentimes, a good architect, or a lot of architects, will will bring us or a custom builder in early in the process. What I like to say is, it's not going to do anybody any any good if I draw them the Taj Mahal and then they don't want to spend the money it takes to build the Taj Mahal. Um, right. So, I I have to echo what Janine says and and bringing in an architect that appreciates having the builder insight on the front end, so that expectations. Um, stay level um, is is key to this being a successful process. Um, where I was, and I lost my train of thought, so never mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, connected. well that's, that's actually a common theme when I when I'm counseling people. To, what losing <laughs> your thought? <laughs> losing your well, train that, of thought. Yeah, that's because I'm seasoned. But 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 bringing expectations, he had a moment. <laughs> expectations and reality together right. That's right. Is, is a huge piece in any type of uh, real estate. It's because people do get a notion that, oh, I'm going to be able to get this. And they have this great vision. They've been, they've been to some you know, uh, completed homes and things like that and see all this wonderful finish and things like that and go, yeah, that's what I want. And they find out what it costs. And they go, maybe not. <laughs> Put on the brakes. <laughs> well, you know, now one question I've got you know, in reference to Gabriel Home Builders. Let's say I, I see a home of yours and I really love it. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and I want to build a home with you. Do you have any any um, let's say standard specs that you can build out, or any type of standard, or is everything done via an architectural firm, such as 
my buddy over here. <laughs> um, you know, how does that sort of work? Everything that we do is pretty customized. Now, we do have some based on a, a client's budget and what, they, what they're looking for and what their vision is. We do have some recommendations and suggestions and some sort of standards to, to help get them there. But for the most part, finishes, uh, design, style, that's customized and generally together with an architect on, on what it's going to look like at the end of the day. Gotcha. Because so I was looking at your website, you know, GabrielHomeBuilders.com, some incredible homes that you built. I mean, you. absolutely gorgeous homes. I encourage everybody, if you're out there and you're looking at getting some fresh ideas, We've had two websites so far we've given out, but Gabriel Home Builders is, is who we're talking, speaking with right now. Phenomenal website, great portfolio of both new construction and renovations that you've done out there. What are you seeing more of right now? Are you seeing more people going in and renovating their existing properties? Or are you seeing a lot of individuals going out there and saying, I'm doing a lifestyle change, I'm going to build a new home from scratch, as we were talking about earlier, and really building for the future, whether it be a new home or, an exi- or, or existing? What are you seeing more of right now? That is a great question because we are seeing a lot of both. Um, We really are. I mean, it's hard for me to say what I'm seeing more of. A lot of people are asking us, what should we do? Should we renovate our home? Because there's a lot of value. You know, there's, there's value in our property. So should we tear it down and build or should we stay here and renovate it? So that's something that we try to help the client decide and figure out cost-wise, budget-wise, what works better, how much it'll cost to renovate and, and, and compared to build. I, and I can imagine, you know, and a lot of times we're seeing a lot of individuals who have their home, it's paid off, it's free and clear. They want to they wanna stay where they're at, but they want a new lifestyle. They want a new home. And so, you know, we're seeing a lot of those changes. And I think it's important, and I'm always a big believer also in renovation, just as much as new construction. We are going to be coming up against a break right now. How can we reach you, if you don't mind? You can reach me on my website at gabrielhomebuilders.com, or you can give me a call at 713-861-8613. That is Gabriel Home Builders. She's going to stick around because, remember, we have our last segment, which we get to ask, ask questions of everybody, and it's our open round. But stay tuned. We're going on a break right now. We'll be right back. And that's the recipe for making love. It doesn't need sugar. Welcome back to the Real Estate Rat Pack Radio Show with Chris, Joe, and Rob. The crew is taking your calls, so dial in at 1-800-808-5548. And welcome back to the Real Estate Rat Pack Show. Time flies when you're having fun. We're already it's, on the second half. It's incredible. It's, it's flying inc- so fast, we don't even notice that the brakes have ended. No, we don't. We don't. We just go right <laughs> through. Like, yeah. And Mike's sitting over there going, guys, you're on air. Yes. Mike's are live. <laughs> I think I think we're Mike's favorite, but he he you know he has to keep us in in line. You know we don't do enough shout outs, but you know I, I think the one shout out we do need to give is to Mike, who is here in the studio with us. I mean he makes Steadfast this happen Mike. every week for us, and we really appreciate that, Mike. Woo-hoo. And you know we also do a shout out to Jason Jimenez, who happens to be in the studio, and he is responsible for our guest being here today. Say hello, yeah, that is Jason. Right. Jason. Come over Good here. Job. Tell Jamie's everybody you know one time. Time. One of the things that we always do is Jason is a great contributor to the show, a great sponsor to the show. And so we actually told Jason, you know what? You're so good and you're so great at what you do and we like you so much. Make a show for us. What inspired you to make this show? You know, it was all around the area of, of bringing good people together to, that actually genuinely work together. They know each other. Um, they believe in the aspect of, of what's good for the client. And um, at the end of the day, they're people that I work with on, almost on a weekly basis, and I see all the time. And it's, it was an opportunity for me to exp- expand an opportunity that I had to take care of my friends. That is awesome. You well, know, that's so far, Jason they're doing a Menace fantastic insurance. job, so and we they actually let you pick again. All yes. seem to, to like each other, so yeah, <laughs> we're going to let you do the theme. And let me tell you, if you're out there and you're in the market for any type of insurance, give Jason a call. I use him personally. But an absolutely incredible individual, and his staff over there at Jason Jimenez Insurance is incredible. I can say, the tell him what he only, does. Yes. The designer only hit me once, so I, I, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's being polite because she doesn't know you well. <laughs> anyway, this would be a good, good time for an introduction if you're going to do it. Uh, I was going to let you do it, Rob, okay, but well, I, I can do it if you want to. Well, with Pamela Hope Designs, we have Pamela O'Brien. Welcome to the show. Thank you, guys. And we Glad were having a discussion fine. about the difference between a designer and decorator on the break. And, of course, <laughs> Joe immediately got his foot in his mouth, and we, I helped to extricate that. <laughs> um, 
What is Talk the difference? about the difference between You know, it has changed. Theoretically or historically, in order to call yourself an interior designer, you needed to be – you had to have a four-year interior design degree. The world of design has changed. Television has a lot to do with that. Media has a lot to do with it. So it's really used very much interchangeably. But ultimately, if you have a four-year design degree, you do more – you can do some drawings, renderings, and you do more architectural work. Not at a full architect level, but more architectural work. Decorating tends to be more surfaces and colors and, and more of the fun finishing. Now, you've got some alphabet after your name. And, of course, I see one that I recognize as probably one of the most prestigious, which is the ASID. And you also have IDS and IRN. Could you address the, each of those? Yes. There's the Interior Design Society. There's the Interior Redecorators Network. And then ASID is the primary accrediting um, organization for designers and you can become an asid member through education through experience through um course taking you know ceus we've got the continuing education it's a great organization so now kim's wife i got joe's wife kim i get this correct comes to you and they've already got with greg and they already got with janine and now when do they come you see what he's you? doing there babe you see that? Yeah. You see Ooh, how I that just happened? I can't wait to meet Kim. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 Kim I really, I really think he had it right, though, when he said Kim's wife, Joe. Yeah. 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 I, I was clear on that. that, was, that I knew what he meant. You, think, you, you I, see you, how this, you, this This is a Christian station, Rob. I was clear well, I, on that. I'm just trying to get the roles correct here. You know, it's interesting. I can come in at a number of points uh, of entry. Uh, it can be sometimes I have clients where we're just, I know them, or they may even be new, and we're talking about their life, their hopes, their dreams. We may also be talking about their current home, and we're not going to remodel. We're just going to freshen it up. We're going to update. We may have had a family change. Somebody has a baby. Somebody moves out. A room is not functioning the way it was designed to, or it's not functioning properly for the family. So I can come in at a variety of different entry points. Sometimes they start with me. Sometimes we start with an architect. Sometimes we just start with a room, and, and what can we do with it? So, And let's talk about... Uh... Um, that you come in and they and you all of a sudden discover, you know what, what they want. I need to have an architect. Is that when you would call them, Greg, yes. up and say, yes. you know, we not we need to get with an architect because what you want is, is exactly is well beyond the how scope complicated of what I would do. is it? it? Oh yeah, absolutely. Especially if we're moving, moving wall, yeah, absolutely. Things like that. Absolutely. So, uh, so talk to me about your consultation with people. And I'm always curious how people, you know, with address. And again, it's it, often, especially if you're in the house and doing de- things. Mm-hmm. It's especially stressful. If anyone has ever lived in a house while it's going through a remodel, it's not fun. It is. We have a little handout that we like to give to our clients. We have a little starter package, a little welcome package, and it's kind of a tongue-in-cheek how to live through a renovation. <laughs> Aspirin and tequila, huh? Yeah. Well, yeah. Then, then we send the ba- wine basket over and, uh, and then the prescription drug forms. I like her. And, I'm good. <laughs> But it can be, um, and it's hard. And I tell, particularly with moving, no matter how fantastic the new home is, moving is no picnic. It is no picnic. And we will yes. help you. We will make it. And actually, if we do get involved with our clients' moves, we do try to make it as absolutely lovely as possible. They come home to wine is being poured and there's a CD playing. But that's costly, and that does not work for everyone. So the um, transition, the renovation, even some of the minor remodeling or redecorating, it can be stressful. Things are messy, noisy, dusty. One of the first hurdles removed in my buying a new home was I said I'm never moving if I have to pack anything. Right. And one of the moving companies we had, I'm like, oh, we have a, a service for that. We'll, they do. We'll pack everything up and haul. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. And then we'll have I didn't, an I organizer. That was crazy. I'll be there with my team, and we will place all the pieces. The rug guys will roll out the rugs. The drapery installers will put up the draperies. See, and that, then we that have is how I am moving packers. right there. I am not touching You heard it thing. here, Kim. Yes. He's got it all planned now. <laughs> oh, Kim's, Kim's going to love it. This is the best way to move. Oh, I, I'm seriously, I hate moving. It's the moving. best way to move. Like, they, they'll take care of you, Joe. You know, as she says, stab she'll me set you up. You'll have wine and cheese. Yeah. Oh, you come you home. I'm down anything. with that. Yeah. I'm ready to move tomorrow now. That's right. <laughs> paper <laughs> towels, pay for it part. I mean, everything you want. Yeah, well, it, it's not an inexpensive yeah. way to move, but it's a lovely way to move. I would rather be stabbed in the eye with an ice pick than have to move and do it myself. So that's, you know, how excited I am well, about the process. Well, well they, you know, when they talk about real estate agents, they tell real estate agents you should move it by every four to five years just so you can remember what the experience is like for your clients because yeah. it's tough. You know, people have short memories, though. Then you're in that lovely new home and yeah. you're very, very happy. Yeah. So, yeah. so um, would you be involved with the process? Like they come to 
to, to Greg and then Janine, would you be involved with the process in the beginning also? Or a lot of times, yes. And a lot of times it's because it's an existing client and we're talking about the next stage in life. What are they going to do next? So sometimes I look at plans with them. Sometimes we just talk. And sometimes then we're in the home and we're actually going to work on that home. So, we know we talked about this a lot before the show, and it's a theme that comes up on our show quite a bit. We have a re- recurring show that we call What You Don't Know Can Hurt You. And in the design process, uh, I would imagine that there's a lot of times where uh, the, the client sits down and they have an idea of what they want. And as the designer, you're going, yeah, but that's not going to be great for you at all. Well, and, and we do. We talk about that. I had a client yesterday in the Woodlands. They have a very, very small master bathroom, and they want to put a wine uh, refrigerator and a coffee station in it. I <laughs> love that idea. Love, yes. love that I would idea. I never leave the bathroom. And if they're <laughs> listening, they know. <laughs> coffee and I wine. love them. That's but brilliant. it's It's a small house. And I said, okay, it's only <laughs> about 10 steps to the kitchen. Is it really, really? worth the yeah. real estate to yeah. give up desperately needed cabinets for yeah. the, the beverage station? She explained to me their children who have children, their adult children, return and visit a lot. And as a couple, sometimes they want to go into their bedroom. They want to have the glass of wine or the cup of coffee before the morning starts without necessarily being in the hub of you know, Child Central. Makes yeah, perfect but sense that was an example idea. of know, is bad, it, right? does, it, does it earn its keep? Giving up that space. Now, we actually had a question come in on our, our Facebook page, which was, uh, we have an artist that works for, for my company, Berkshire Hathaway Anderson Properties, Iris Fagrasso, and she's quite a talented artist. Is that something you would do is go out and pick out art? Yes, because when people are building these big houses, they have big walls. Some clients are wonderful collectors. They have a lot of art, but often people need more art. And I'd say the average client does not, when they build, often still we're building a bigger home when we're building at this level of of custom. And they have big walls. People like very big, large, expansive entry areas and and deciding where to put the art and having art to scale, kind of like breaks to scale. One of the biggest things is people are intimidated by buying art and they're worried about the cost. They tend to buy a lot of little things. That never looks as impressive or gives the real impact that Less you're looking for. Is more. Larger, yeah. better pieces. And it's, you know, in the end, it's often the same amount of money. A bunch of little things or one really great big one. Yes. Go for the really nice piece. And working with an artist is a fantastic opportunity. Clients really, really enjoy that because then the art becomes more personal. I, I'm incredibly spoiled by this because my wife uh, is, is an artist and, and uh, even teaches art to our, our kids at our kids' school. Um, so she understands the flow of color and all that sort of thing. And, and has, proportion and, and balance. And proportion and balance and all that sort of thing. So, you know, I, I get to witness what a just a good picture uh, and that type of thing can do for a wall. And, and through that, because I, I have – that's not me at all. I, I'm I'm a marketing guy. I understand color and all this sort of thing. But picking out art, I know it when I see it. I'm like, yes, I like that. That looks good. <laughs> so once it's there, I can make my call. But picking out and then bring it – to stick on the wall? No way. Not me at all. Boy, this building this house and decorating it for Kim is going to be the best <laughs> thing ever. I mean, I am it just really so is, excited right? about this relationship. <laughs> we're all going to get together. It's a big party we're having. Oh, it is. We've got all y'all involved here. Kim, uh, I mean, we've brought together the perfect team for you. I, there's nothing better. I have another um, client whose mother's an artist, this show. and that's I know fantastic it. to have in house artists. Yeah. Great. Uh, you, are, you know, and it's amazing because I have an in-house artist. His name is Andrew, four years old. Is he? Yeah, young. Yeah. That, and I have work. to tell him everything looks really pretty when he draws on the wall, but we're going to have to unfortunately remove it a little bit because mommy doesn't like it there. So, you know, it's also it's important to, yeah. <laughs> as you mentioned, hire the right one. This well, house and is two getting solutions more more for that. One is we pick out one or two really fantastic pieces and we frame them. And the child is so excited and the family's excited. We make them look fantastic. The other is there's a very cool frame that you can pop out and add to it. I think it'll hold up to about 18 small pieces of art, you know, 18 or eight and a half by 11 letter or legal size sort of sheets. So you can just add to it or let them rotate. I like that. Uh, Before we get to, we got a two minute warning here. And it's not like the Super Bowl where where you actually get, you can stretch it out over 10 commercials. Um, I'd like to know about like the trends. What are you seeing with people coming and said, this is, I've got to have this. What type of things are you seeing? I think that um, we are enjoying lighter colors and paint. Uh, A lot of neutrals. Gray is very, very popular. It started to be very hot, I'd say in about 2011 in Houston. 
Now you can get everything in gray. It used to be your paint and your surfaces. Now you can't get rugs and draperies and everything. Gray is still popular. Um, levels of neutral are still popular, but overall lighter colors. So you light blue green. Faux paint requests, things like that. Frankly, only in the very highest end homes do we do faux paint. However, wallpaper has come back with a vengeance. And, and some today's of it looks wall. Like faux paint. <laughs> Today's wallpaper is a fantastic product. Wow. Another thing that's done really well is our window treatment op- options are Next. great. We have technology. We have um, energy control, light control. Window treatments are really fantastic. Is that – I'm always, you know, I, I'm the guy that would be arguing money. We don't and need my them. wife is – yes. Yeah. And my wife is like, you know, money? What you're money? a big radio star now. You should <laughs> yeah, be able to do that. <laughs> yes. You're a celebrity. Yeah, you're you a celebrity. Know, don't you realize what the real estate rat pack page is? <laughs> You're yes, rich. yes. What am I thinking? You know the the big bucks we are knocking big down with bucks, this show. Between you and between you and Rob, I mean, you guys take up a massive amount of the budget right there. You should be able to get anything you want to. Yeah, you know. Well, I have my hair expenses, so <laughs> as they all look They're at be, me, what being put to good use? You know, we They're are coming up against much. a break. How can we reach you if you don't mind? Pamela O'Brien with Pamela Hope Designs website. Pamela Hope Designs and two eight one seven nine four four eight. We have one more section, one more segment in the show. It's going to be open mic. We're going to be talking about a lot of different things. But stay tuned. We're going on break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Real Estate Rat Pack Radio Show with Chris, Joe, and Rob. The crew is taking your calls, so dial in at one 800 808 Five five four eight, and welcome back to the Real Estate Rat Pack Show. You know, time flies when you're having fun, and always during the break, it seems like we have so much conversation Off-air going on. Conversation. We have, we have, we have said this before. We need to do a show called Between the Break. Yes. <laughs> well, what we do is get one sponsor to to pay for everything, then we just have one commercial at the beginning, and then forget the rest. That is correct. That's that's not that's not a bad idea, right there. Done deal. So right? who's good? Oscar, <laughs> Oscar so said he's got it. I just yes. saw the nod. <laughs> <laughs> he's on it. Both Jason and Oscar are like, yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> so we have another guest for our final segment of the show here. Oscar, man, tell us, uh, introduce yourself. Yeah, uh, Oscar Hernandez uh, run a small team. Oscar Fine Properties at Keller Williams. Been in business for I guess about eleven years now, and really enjoying it. Gotcha. You know, we are we are this year so far has been the year of multiple guests on the show. Yeah, it has. Oscar is actually a prior guest yes. on the show as well. Two timers club. So you're, yeah. two, you're part of the two timers club. Yes, I, I, I appreciate you guys welcoming me back. You know, it's, I mean, that's only there's only probably like five, six people, maybe no, not even that many. Not even that many. I think maybe in... I think three I can think of. Right, yeah, that yeah. is correct. Last week, Danny, Gary, Michelle Hatmaker, Michelle. And oh, now four. Oscar. So it's four. Yep, four. There we go. Yeah, awesome. You're, an you're elite, one of four. Crowd. Wow. <laughs> you know, and, and, Put that and Oscar, on your card. you know, one of the things we talk about a lot, obviously you've heard about everything going on club. here today in regards to new home builds, in regards to architects, in regards to interior designs. <laughs> How's the market out there? What's going on with the market? The market has been extremely hot uh, since, you know, early last year. Um, 2013 was a very strong year. We had thirty record, I guess, thirty consecutive months of of uh, home price or home sale increases. So it's been a really great uh, year. Um, I think the market has been a little bit out of whack in terms of not having enough inventory, but we are seeing more and more people list their homes. So hopefully, we can get more balance in two thousand fourteen and keep growing. You know, I, that, I have that, a that's question for Oscar ju- right off the bat because it's selfishly motivated. But since y'all have been throwing me under the bus the entire show about the <laughs> about the house, it's our job. Somebody's right? got to do it. And it's the theme of the show. Kim pays as well. Yeah, and I, I promise my wife's paying attention now. So you know, we we say uh, the wife and I say uh, we want to we want to buy a new house, right? And we we begin this process, and we say, well, you know, hey, I know Oscar. Let's let's give him a call and uh, and talk to him. And we come to you and say, Oscar, you know, our budget's kind of around three hundred thousand, right? At what point do you say you're looking at uh, a resale home? a production build home or a custom build home. Yeah. I think really it starts with doing a need it need analysis, sitting down with you, finding out um kind of like what the other guests have talked about, what's your lifestyle and how long you plan to be in the home. The other thing is we take an approach um with every client that, you know, that property's maybe one of their biggest purchases. Uh so it's kind of an investment for them. 
So we sit down, we go through that needs analysis with you, and we kind of evaluate what's going to fit best for you. Um, also, you know, sometimes you're bound by geographic location, what your options are within a certain budget. Mm. You know, so um, the new construction route may not be available just because land prices are so much, but perhaps getting a you know a 1950s ranch and and working with the interior designer to um, put your personal taste into it, you know, is an option. So. Do you find that there's a point or or a a key, I don't know, something that you hear that says, hey, these guys would be more satisfied, or the custom build is the route for them? Yeah, I mean, sometimes. Uh, you know, if someone has very busy lifestyles, uh, they don't have the time to work with uh, an architect and builder and really be hands-on. Uh, sometimes, you know, that may not be the route for them. Maybe finding a finished product uh, that's more moving ready, you know, that could be an option for them. So we kind of listen for those different cues, I guess. Gotcha. I, but there's all kind of like little subtle cues going on Absolutely. here. I don't know you know, right. what's <laughs> happening. None of us have our our headphones on, so it's sort of uh, it was we got we were looking at it going. Who is this? But we actually have a caller on air right now. If it's my wife, hang up. <laughs> How are you doing this morning, caller? Are you there? It is Liam. 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 How you doing, buddy? I am doing amazing. I've listened to this show all day. And uh, uh, listening to Oscar there, right now, Oscar is uh, one of my clients for my business. And uh, I just want to talk about Top Notch Realtor. He actually is. Well, and what a joy to work with uh, from my perspective as uh, since uh, he works, I work with him on the, so many things. Well, Liam, uh, Liam, for the audience's sake, Liam, is this is the gentleman we spoke of earlier in the show who we are having the garage sale for uh, and, you know, Obviously, Liam, we we are so uh, upset and bothered by what happened. You know, we, we want to do everything we can to help, and we hope our audience will will uh, participate in that. And to give your company a a, a shameless plug, a, a speedy post. Uh, you were mentioning that Oscar is one of your clients, and y'all work together. Um, let me tell you guys out there in the real estate community, if you are a realtor and you are yet to start working with uh, Liam, you are way behind the curve of excellence. Um, Liam, real briefly, just give us a, a shameless plug for your company. Oh, okay, shameless plug time. Excellent. Um, what we'll we do? <laughs> Freebie. Uh, um, Oscar, when he ever he has a listing, he goes ahead and gives us a call. Um, we take his signs and we go out to his client's uh, home. We put the sign at the ground. It's a big four by four post. It's six foot tall. It really highlights his client's listing. And it saves him the time. It saves his people the time of going out and doing it themselves. And then we go back out and pick it up when he sells the home. And without a doubt, that's usually really quick for Oscar. Outstanding. And, and let me tell you, the look of the home with a Speedy Post sign on it is completely different than a home with just a stake than just a regular, you know, traditional sign that yard signs they do. It absolutely adds look, feel, class, style. It makes it look like the agent took additional resources an additional Absolutely. time to be able to put that in there. Builders should take for, note also. Yes, for a very, very minimal cost. It and is you know, absolutely incredible. I said for the real estate community, and that I need to correct that. For our listening audience, if you are selling your home, if it is currently on the market and your realtor has one of those cheesy little metal signs out there, you need to give them a call and say, hey, I actually want a real sign uh, for selling my property, and I think you need to call Speedy Post and get on the ball here. Uh, Mr. Walter. Absolutely. And if they do call me like that, the realtor calls me, I'll get out to the house. I'll trade that sign out for them, even if they're not a client yet. We'll get them on board with it. And uh, that's so, you know, I appreciate a shout out for that guy and uh, giving the chance for that. You bet. You uh, bet. I know that's not also, why you called. You were you were calling to give so, Oscar a plug, but uh, you do, you do, you do <laughs> a great quick, job. Also, I want to say how humbled and thankful I am to have friends like you guys who have done so much in this time of need for me because, uh, it is a rough time for me, and you all at the Real Estate Rat Pack and all of my clients have just, it's humbling how great it is to see you all uh, just step up to help me. So thank you so much. Well, we are glad to do it, and, and I, I don't say this with any bit of uh, uh, shyness at all. You, you for me, are, are, are everything that uh, America is about. Um, you are trying to build a business, employ people, strengthen our local community, uh, and and you're not you didn't initiate this. You didn't ask for a handout. 
Uh, oh, we I... we found out about it and we we started uh, promoting it and doing doing this. It was not a, any bit on your initiative uh, that that this was taking place. And, and uh, I admire what you do, and I've always believed in your company and and, uh, and wish you the greatest of success. So um, we're happy to do it for you. Well, thank you so much. I'm gonna you back everything. God bless you guys. God bless you. Likewise, Liam. Thanks a lot for calling in, bud. Thank you. I, I appreciate those kind words from Liam. Uh, his service is essential to our business. Uh, the time saving, uh, obviously, a much higher, um, I, I guess, visual branding that Absolutely. it brings to to my business. So it presents the them. home yeah. in so much more professional of a manner. I would challenge anybody. This the marketing guy notices these kind of things. You Google home for sale on the internet and just look at pictures and see if you find houses with a little metal frame. Uh, sign out. They don't. They always, when you find those stock image photos of houses for sale, they always have that big, beautiful sign out in front. Why? Because it's a better presentation, period. Well, not only presentation, and, but when you drive down, it, I mean, let me tell you, the one thing his signs do, they elevate the signs. Absolutely. So you can see them from far away. And so you don't have to worry about, I mean, how often are you in the car with somebody, Oscar, and you're trying to you're trying to show a home and you're driving down the street and you're, you know, a lot of times you've got the address, but it helps to have a nicely marked sign because that's one of the things that's on there is who it's listed by, where it's going. Let me tell you, you can see those signs as soon as you turn on any street. And Absolutely. it's elevated. It's in the air. Six you feet can put, high. Six <laughs> feet high. You can put riders <laughs> and, on it. And, and let and me tell you this, really too, nice. Chris, th- that it's no coincidence. This is a testimony to, again, we always talk about work with experts, right? And it's no coincidence that one of our – two-time guests who uh, is a rare group here, just happens to use Liam Services. What which, a coincidence is that a, he's using the superior sign. A great segue back, <laughs> because I know sometimes that the realtor is the first point of contact to the other services we've talked about today, the architect, the builder, and the designer. Do you have a group of people that you feel comfortable with, like that might be here in the studio that you <laughs> <laughs> This, this this exact no seriously this exact team completely um i was thinking as everyone else was speaking earlier that uh you've got from start to finish here a great team you know to build your home so you know and we and we are coming up against the, the last few moments so yeah. one of the things we're going to do is our lightning round which you love to do go around and give every guest an opportunity 30 seconds or less what you want them to leave knowing about this show going forward I will let you go first. Everybody's go. panicking. Me? <laughs> what do I want them to know? Um, well, great architecture doesn't have to be expensive. It just has to be smart. It has to be intentional. Um, it needs to fit you and what your vision is. I think if you're going to live in a home for more than five years, I'd be less concerned about what the neighbors think and what, uh, what resale value is and more what fits your lifestyle. Gabriel Holmes. I think it's important to... Bring the builder on on early as part of your team. Let let uh, the builder help carry you. Let us help carry you through the process and help you meet your expectations so that we can build the vision as you, as you see it. Pamela, I was going in order that we had him on. Pamela Hope. Okay, well, great design doesn't happen overnight. It's really not supposed to, but it not only is beautiful, it adds to the comfort and function of your home. So buy with thought and design your home decorate your home over time the way you really need it to be. And Oscar. Oscar. Uh, land is very scar- scarce right now, so if uh, you don't have your own lot to build on, uh, working with a realtor who can try to find properties off market is probably very important right now and help you with the uh, evalu- the valuation of the final construction. Yeah, Joe, right. anything you want to add? Work with experts. I mean, I say that like I don't know how many shows, but work with experts. It's this so critical. It is a collaborative process. Get the best team together and let it be a team that can work together to do this process. And if you want to find an expert, go to realestateratpack.com. And so Kim, Kim will get you the phone numbers of all these people here so you can work <laughs> with them. You know, and I always tell everybody what I want to leave you with is there's a saying I heard the other day. It said, whether you can or you can't, you're right. Yeah. It's in your hands. Remember that. Until next week, we will talk to you soon. And you've been listening to the Real Estate Rat Pack. 
The question is, who's Frank, who's Sammy, who's Dean, and who's the other guy? Uh, Chris is, yes, Chris Frank. is Frank, I'm he's Dean. Dean, and I'm Sammy. Yes, he's <laughs> Dean. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> so tune in to The Really Big Show every Saturday at 9 a.m. right here on 100.7 The Word, KKHT.